If I were to ask you to think of a sport, what would be the first to come to mind? Would it be football, baseball, or soccer? I bet you didn't think of cheerleading. In my first few years of being a cheerleader, I never thought it was a sport either. All we did was ride the bus to games and cheer on the teams while they played. There was not a lot of physical effort that we needed to put in to do what we did, so this may be how you all see cheerleading. But once I got to high school, everything changed. We had to be much stronger and more active to be able to lift girls weighing 100 pounds or more into the air and bring them back down on their feet. Many organizations like the NCAA still doesn't recognize cheerleading as a sport, so today I'll be explaining why it should be one. So what is a sport? Oxford Languages defines a sport as an activity involving physical exertion and skill in which an individual or team competes against another. The Women's Sports Foundation listed these requirements needed for cheerleading to be a sport. The first is that it must be a physical activity involving propelling a mass through space and overcoming the resistance of that mass. And this would be accomplished by our stunting. Next, it must involve competing against an opponent and be governed by rules under which a winner is declared. And this is done at our competitions. Lastly, the primary purpose of competition is to compare the skills of each participant. And these can include stunting, jumping, and tumbling which are all rated at competitions on these score sheets by their creativity, difficulty, and technique. Cheerleading meets all these requirements except for one. This would be that the primary purpose is competition, not cheering on high school and collegiate athletic teams. So for the most part, cheerleading meets the description of the sport, so now let's look at the physical aspect. Cheerleading requires lots of skill and physical ability, not just yelling cheers loudly and doing a few jumps. Professional cheer organization Empire Cheer says that it also requires athleticism, coordination, strength, flexibility, and dedication. Even though their routines only last about two minutes, cheerleaders spend countless hours practicing them over and over again until they're perfect. They often have to add strength training workouts to build up the muscle in their lower body, shoulders, and core. The base and back spot positions must be able to support the bottom of the stunt, so they'll need incredible strength, focus, and balance. The flyers need incredible strength and flexibility to be able to maintain different positions in the stunt. Stunting requires lots of training to put into practice certain skills for each position. Many people think that the base is the hardest. Every stunt needs a solid foundation, so without it, it'd be unsuccessful. They need solid footing, solid holds, and to need to be able to catch the flyer at any time during the routine. They need incredible timing so that their support can prevent injury and mistakes. A non-solid base can mean a flyer falling through the stunt and injuring themselves or the rest of the group. Next, we have the back spot position. They don't have to be as physically strong as the bases because they're not providing as much support for the flyer, but their job is still important. They must be the first to catch the flyer at any time, and they need to know how to properly do so to avoid injuries. They also need to know how to effectively communicate with the group to avoid mistakes. Lastly, we have the flyer. These are the girls being thrown into the air and are responsible for getting the crowd involved. Along with balance, coordination, and energy, flyers must be able to trust the foundation underneath them to catch them at any moment while they're doing all their moves. So they need to be able to flip and twist gracefully in the air, land safely, and continue on with their routine, even if they fall through. As you can see, cheerleaders have many different positions and a different set of skills required for each one. Now let's see the dangerous aspect of performing these skills. One of the most dangerous sports in terms of serious injury is cheerleading. Even though, compared to other sports, the number of injuries are low, they are often much more severe. 50 to 66% of catastrophic injuries in female athletes go to cheerleading, which consists of severe injuries to the brain or spine. These can result in long-term medical conditions, permanent disabilities, or a shorter lifespan. Common spots of injury for cheerleaders are the wrists, shoulders, neck, head, or ankles. Sprains are very common in these areas, especially the ankles. Landing a tumbling pass or jumping down from a pyramid can put a lot of stress on your ankles and knees. Not landing properly can tear or strain 
a ligament in your knee resulting in a torn ACL, MCL, or meniscus. Minor strains can take a few weeks to heal, but the more severe can take months to over a year to fully recover and can bring long-term consequences. Even though cheerleaders aren't coming into direct contact with a team like other sports, they can still get some of the same injuries. According to the National Children's Hospital for Injury Research, cheerleaders have a higher chance of getting concussions, sprains, and fractures than football players. Concussions come in every sport, but they are becoming a lot more common in cheerleading. Stunting accounts for 42 to 60 percent of all cheerleading related injuries and 96 percent of those are concussions. Some schools are saying they see more concussions coming from the cheerleading squads than the football and soccer teams. Without the proper training on how to toss and catch the flyer, these injuries will continue to occur. So as we conclude, I'll be explaining why the recognition of our sport is important to the safety of our cheerleaders. Today we discussed the many reasons why cheerleading should be a sport, including how it fits the technical description of a sport, the physical exertion and skill they display, and the dangers of performing these skills. Earlier I asked you to think of a sport, and hopefully by now you can add cheerleading to that list. But was the point of my whole speech just to add an activity to that answer? Why should we even care if cheerleading is a sport or not? Let me tell you why. Orthopedic surgeon Dr. Hans Olsen says, since many organizations still don't recognize cheerleading as a sport, they don't have to follow consistent safety regulations. This results in over 30,000 cheerleaders going to the hospital every year for cheerleading related injuries. The lack of recognition we get um, also results in less scholarship opportunities, improper training and conditions, and less qualified coaches. The positives for cheerleading being recognized as a sport are numerous, but if our safety doesn't seem important and I still haven't changed your mind, let me finish with this. Other teams throw balls around while we throw other teammates. Which to you is harder to catch?